Welcome to part three of Cyberpunk 2077. We're gonna have to get our clothes and get ready to deal with um the Ripper Doc because oh yeah, we have to go get our DLCs from that too. Here's the thing. <clears throat> This episode is going to introduce the Ripper Doc, something that you're going to be visiting a lot when you have the money, particularly Victor, because Victor will have the uh, basic stuff you need, like the uh, common, uncommon, rare, and legendary stuff that you need, provided you actually pay him off, which, yes, that is a mission, and you'll find out more about that later on, but... <clears throat> We are going to have to go there to get rid of a malware virus that got into our system or whatever the hell ton of virus it is. But it's bad and it needs to go. By the way, this is uh, some of the clothes that's in V's room. I think the DLC was something I missed. I'll probably try to show that off. But these are the default clothes that are in V's room and it doesn't matter what... Uh, sex you wear as far oh, what sex you are as far as for V is concerned those clothes are practically gender neutral and yes there are gendered clothes in this game so we might as well point that out oh and by the way the weapons I'm getting it would be in your best interest to carry a shotgun or actually carry a different type of weapon because if you carry the same type of weapon they all share the same ammo if one's going to be out of pistol ammo, they're all going to be out of pistol ammo. You're going to be screwed and you're going to have to end up picking up weapons from anybody else anyway. And you don't want to throw away your weapons, if, especially if you're trying to customize them. And now we're going to be introduced to another uh, fixer for police missions. So, what? You embarrassed? Hey, V. Regina Jones here. If you're looking for work in Watson, give me a call. How did you find me? How'd you even I know, know my name? I know where to gather my intel. Could even call me a collector. Later, V. Well, that was Regina. She basically is going to not only be the person that will have all the crimes in progress and also uh, police assistance in progress, but also she will have the Cyber Psychos, which is one of the main side quests. Well, it's not really a main side quest, but basically is one of the most expansive side quests. And let me be honest with you, those are a lifesaver to level up. Having to deal with the Cyber Psychos, you're going to have to try to subdue them. And you'll hear more about the Cyber Psychos later. But for right now, we need to get out of here and... Wait, hold on. Am my eyes deceiving me? Oh my god, it's Woke Jax! Holy shit! The new era was a lie! The new era was a lie! <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11 is a piece of shit! <laughs> Woke Jax was standing right there! Holy crap! Oh, and now for another mission! How you like my new punching bag? See, this is uh, Coach Fred. Coach Fred is going to introduce you to another side quest which will practically give you some of the uh, best that. upgrades in the game but primarily on. one of them will get you a fancy new car which I actually like the most however they are going to be hard this may be easy for now but don't expect all of them to be especially if you do not have the gorilla arms for the love of God Get the gorilla arms for later. You're going to need them. You mentioned some now. Also, Coach is a shop. He actually will give you physical upgrades. So if you have anything, like for instance, guns or melee weapons that has slots for um, upgrades, he has those upgrades here. And for the love of God, put those on for right now, because there are better. But bear in mind one thing. When you get better weapons, you're going to have to try to find better upgrades. And he's only got the basic stuff right now. So his gist for his quest line is you claim the fights. You give him the prize. You give him 30% of, well, 10% of the prize money. And uh, you take the rest. 
However, here's the thing. These fights don't always end very well. And there's one particular fight that there's a choice that you could either have it actually work in your favor or you can completely royally screw that over by just simply doing a mission before that fight. But we'll worry about the brats later on. Right now, we've got other things to worry about, like getting my gun before we go to the uh, mission with Jackie. So, let's go on ahead and get that gun. And also, if I were you, I would actually save my money, come back, and buy some materials. You're going to need the materials for crafting, and more importantly, you're going to also need um, silencers and scopes. I'm going to have to get some more money for a silencer and scope, because look at my money, man. Look at my money. But bear in mind on how much money you're going to spend, but also... Oh, yeah, I should have got, I should have got me a knife. Why the fuck did I not get me a knife? But bear in mind the... Um, Thanks a lot. Money you have, and also bear in mind the street cred. The more street cred you get, and the more level you get, the better weapons you get. And the better weapons there are available, the more expensive they are. But bear in mind one thing. Once you put on an upgrade, and I cannot stress this enough, once you put on a mod, that mod stays there for good. If you try to change the mod, the other mod's going to be destroyed. Plain and simple. And for now, since I only got maybe two pistols, I might as well put those together since I have those right now. I'm going to come back later on when I have enough money, and I'm going to get myself a melee weapon. Specifically a blunt force one. I'm going to try to find a blunt force weapon and use that to actually power up my reflexes. Because using blunt weapons will power... And also using melee weapons in general will power up your reflexes which will make your punches do more damage and if you want to beat the brat you might want to have reflexes at 10 or higher and some perks with those punches just want to warn you and same thing with uh technical and same thing with um i'm trying to think intelligence and cool, definitely same thing with cool, because cool, you want to try to cool down situations, but more importantly, cool will have it to where you'll get cool blood, and it'll be harder for the enemy to detect you, because your blood is still. Because some of these enemies have cybernetics that will track um, heat signatures and blood. So with that said, let's go on to Jackie, because he's right down the stairs, and don't aggravate the cop. Hmm. Woman of the hour. Jeez. They took you long enough. Put up an appetite. Just wait. Sit down. Let me finish this. Then we can drop in on Senor Vector. Mentioned something about a surprise yesterday. Am I remembering right or just had a brain fart? Probably both, because you usually forget shit. But it just so happens, I think I might have bagged us a sweet-ass J-O-B. Go on. I mean, maybe it's not as big as that, but... Just that he's fronted by a little-known someone named Dexter Deschamps. Only the top fixer in night fucking city. Badass black Jesus of the afterlife. 300 pounds of partly gold-plated coup. How did you manage to pull this? Trade in your spleen or something? As far as I know, we're not the type to get fingered by Dex. You and me? No. Oh, but T-Buck, she's the one that hooked us up. Got us talking. Knew it was a done deal the moment he laid eyes on me. Cause come on, ain't nobody who can resist this. Am I right? <laughs> sure, Jack. Whatever you say. So what's the gig? We meant to come out in one piece? Well, our savior wants to tell you everything himself. Face to face. 
No pressure, but whole deal's riding on you now, chica. All right. Let's hear what old Dex has to say. Set it up. Dex is a real deal when it comes to fixers. Don't get me wrong. Don't got nothing against the Padre or Wakako, but Dex is a of his own. Don't get me started on fixers. They catch a client, find the cheapest gong to do the job, then drop their corpse at a landfill. Shit. Hit the nail on the head, dude. Gracias, Dios. Estoy lleno. Brought your wheels. Gave them to my guy yesterday to smooth over the dents after our, uh, dust off with the scabs. Thanks, Jack. Much appreciated. Top-notch work Miguel did. Rides like it looks. Factory new. We'll see about that. So we rolling or what? Let's feel this factory new ride. And now to introduce Calling Cars. Basically, for now we'll be driving in V's vehicle. However, later on in the game, we'll be able to call forth vehicles specifically the dlc vehicle that i'll be using later on but <clears throat> you'll be requested to buy vehicles you'll also be requested to um actually get vehicles as rewards so in other words you'll have a lot of vehicles to spare Whichever one you pick is up to you. Some of them have good handling, some of them suck, as far as handling is concerned. So bear that in mind. And once you drive to the destination, sometimes you'll just be forced to get out of the car and walk the rest of the way. Other times you can just drive there and be in the vicinity. But be careful, because sometimes when you drive your car to the vicinity, guess what? You're going to probably be shot at by the enemies because they'll be spying, they spot you as soon as they see your car. But whatever the case, we are here in the doctor's office. And by the way, that's Misty. Misty actually has an important side quest too. And that side quest happens to be a collectible as well. So bear that in mind and oh my god, Vic's office did not render. Wow! <laughs> this game, this fucking game. <laughs> I am not doing this intentionally. <laughs> it's gonna be like Dynasty Warriors 9 all over again, isn't it? I swear I am not doing this intentionally. This is happening all on its own. I have nothing to do with this. But this game right here. <laughs> This is the part where Vic is supposed to pay attention to me and actually have me to go onto the chair to uh, fix the problem that's plaguing me, right? And that's right after he finished watching the boxing game. But still, this is a glitch that has happened and it is rather annoying. And by the way, I was supposed to introduce you to the Ripper Doc. Well, he is the Ripper Doc, but what Ripper Docs do is... They give you cybernetics. Now, if only I could activate that cutscene. Hey, I can actually get the uh, I can actually get the items I need. But apparently, the whole room did not render. So Vic doesn't even know that I'm here. Good Lord, have mercy. Let's get by the door. Vicky's bright as ever, you old ripper. Good to see you. Good to see you too, V. Oh, wow. What do I owe the pleasure today? Last gig. Had to jack into a client's neuro socket. Think I might have gotten spiked. Experiencing migraines, nausea, hypersensitivity to bright lights. Oh, kit and caboodle. All right, kit. We'll sort you out in a flash. Besides that, how are things? Met a new fixer. Gave me a job. Name's Dexter Deshawn. 
Known quantity from the afterlife. No denying you're moving up. But something Keep you're not telling up, me. That's then? all. I've heard some things about Dex. He's not as chill as he makes himself out to be. Need some new kit, but tools, not toys, Vic. Time I bumped up my sights and got a grip. Really? Now? Finally? Vic, shit's getting real. Got a job from Dex to Sean. Hitting the major leagues. Need tech that can perform. The Dexter Deshawn? <laughs> well, that is something. But let me guess. Hasn't paid you yet. Quit crying, Vic. I'll bring you the Eddies later, with interest. You know I will. Hmm. Last time. You hear? Chair, please. Sit down and relax. Kuroshi Optics. Best I've got, and should be about right under the circumstances. Now check in. You peruse and choose while I scan. Let's see what's going on inside. Okay, these are your cyberware. And your cyberware is going to give you an edge against everybody else who has a cyberware. Eventually, you'll end up getting a new operating system. Eventually, you'll end up getting new optics. Eventually, you'll be getting gorilla arms and more powerful stuff. But for right now... You got this Kenoshi, um, you got the Kenoshi optics that you need right now, which is going to be good because it's going to improve your hacking and more importantly, place demons in people. And those demons you're going to probably get from T-Bug in part four, but that's not the point. But what the matter is, you need an optics that will allow you to put any program or demon inside of people. But more importantly, there are others that'll help you with weight capacity, health, and everything else. Mark 1, like I said. Decent enough scanner. Displays data on your cornea. Cherry on the top's a built-in external lens disruptor. In layman's terms, any surveillance cam will capture your face as a blur. And just remember, your body will still show up as crystal clear. Hmm. Carve away. Lay that major league arm of yours right here. Now, a bit of anesthetic. Feel anything? Same as always. Don't feel a thing. You ask me that every time, you know. Not as if things are gonna be any different today. Sure thing, kid. I mean... Not like there's any risk of a stroke or paralysis, but <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a doctor. That's what I thought. Lights out for a minute, all right? Okay, let's test this. See the magic in action. Linking you in. You might feel a little discomfort at first. Blurred vision, low contrast, glitches. How's it look? Feel all right to you? Oh, this is fantastic, Vic. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Time for the scanner. It might take you a few seconds to adjust, but first time's rarely the charm, <laughs> with anything, really. Scanner should eventually sync with your thought processes and read your intentions. I also inject an NCPD file search. Run into any ne'er do wells? <laughs> you know exactly what they ne'er did well.
It ought to work like a charm. Now draw your weapon. You should see your ammo count in a brand new sight. Shit, Victor, not bad. I don't know what to say. Say you'll take this and remember the dosage. Two whiffs now, and another two in an hour. You're the best, Vic. I owe you. <laughs> Go on, kid. Show them what you're made of. And once you hit the big leagues, don't forget where you came from. For the record, yes! Owing Vic 20,000 eddies is a side quest, and I forgot to mention that, so I might as well mention that now. You pay him if you have the eddies for it. Yes, you can do that early. Then he's just going to skip dialogue, and it'll probably crash. So you actually have to owe him money. But you have to wait at least till later to order in order to pay him. But with that said... Waiting in his ride for you. While Jackie is getting acupuncture, I'm going to be paying a visit to Dexter Deshaun. And Dexter Deshaun is going to be our point of contact for a really big quest. But before we do, Regina is calling, so I might as well... Hey, hey, let me call her, goddammit! What the hell? Oh, this game. Serious this, seriously this game. I'm gonna have to recall her back. Hold on just one second. Ah, there she is. Oh, hey! V, listen. I've got this delicate matter. That's why I called you. The number of cyber psycho attacks in the city is on the rise. Now that's probably not news to you, but this is... There are people who say cyberpsychosis can be treated. Right. And I know exactly how that sounds, but I believe even an unproven therapy is... If I get a tip about a possible attack, I'll give you a call. Maybe you can investigate before Max Tack hits the scene. But remember, you're not there to execute anybody. Try to incapacitate the attacker, and I'll send someone to pick him up. I hope that's all clear. Hmm. Well, the deal about Cyber Psychos, I haven't really finished this side quest, but this is the main side quest that'll get you a lot of money. Provided you actually render them unconscious, but not kill them. And that's all you need to do. However, some of them can be hard to the point where you may end up accidentally killing them. But for right now... I will go into Dexter Deshaun's limo. Yo, Miss V. A pleasure. Dexter Deshaun in the flesh. Ample indeed. <laughs> Let's roll. Mind if I ask you something right off the bangle? Would you rather live in peace as Miss Nobody, die ripe, old, and smelling slightly of urine, or go down for all times in a blaze of glory smelling near like posies without seeing your 30th? You're either somebody or you fizzle out into nothing. Night City don't let you choose. Oh, but it does. See, in my line of work, I choose to be Mr. Chill. But folk who try to take advantage, well, they see the beast inside. All right, listen close. Scanning a serious job now. Playing gargantuan compared to smashing up a scab home. Let me hear it. What's the job? There's this prototype tech. A biochip, to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Simple. Hmm. Guessing it belongs to a corp? Mm-hmm. Arasaka. Surely that's no problem. Corps don't deserve special treatment. 
Shit, <laughs> you ain't playing around. Got a feeling this could be a start of a beautiful friendship built on heaps of eddies. You work this out? Got a plan? Two things. First, a conundrum with the Maelstrom boys. Needs active resolve in that. Second, a rendezvous. Simple. Client who brought us the job's anxious. She wants to parlay with one of the team. What's the issue needs resolving with Maelstrom? Got a beef? Slot in the shard. Got a classic tale for you. Psycho gang doing his thing two weeks back. Jumped a military convoy. Got away with the gear. Corp don't even know Maelstrom's involved. Now see, convoy was carrying the flathead. A little combat bot, a prototype. And I need me that bit of high grade military tech. Because if we don't get that bot, we don't get no soccer chip. And we sure as hell don't get no happily ever after. But don't get excited. It's a single-use toy. Now, I flat out purchased the damn thing from Maelstrom. Problem is, I did so from a gent went by the name of Brick. I say went, because Brick was the leader. Three days after we'd sealed our deal, his friend and gangmate, one Simon Randall, AKA Royce, plain dropped his ass. Royce is in charge now, and I got no way of knowing if he aims to honor his predecessor's word. To add to this shipstream, one Meredith Stout of Militech has developed an interest in said convoy. Hello? Corpo agent, what's she playing at? Hell if I know. Been skidding around town asking after the convoy as if her life depended on finding it. The one lead she's got zip tied in her trunk. Mm. Sounds like she was waiting on the transport, got stood up. Monochrome in the back's probably her chief suspect. Got nothing from him or on him, so she's keeping him just in case. But she needs to find the stolen gear before her bosses learn she fucked up. Well, Miss V, that is some impressive deduction. Naturally, use that intel as you please. Preferably well. Of course, to do so, you'll need that frazzled cat's info. Sending it now. Client. What's her thing? Why she need to meet? Woman's name's Evelyn Parker. Betting her wasn't easy. Put the word out I was looking for any kind of intel. Right, and? Some brothers from Pacifica got back to me. Told me to stop looking. And the convo. <laughs> anyway, our little client insisted on meeting someone with skin in the game. You know, who'll be there for it all. Yours truly will be remote. T-Bug ain't no people person, and Jaggy's only good at some things. I know you know what I mean. Pretty much leaves you. Think I got everything. Time I got to work. Well, that's just music to my ears. I'll set up the meet with Miss Parker at Lizzie's bar. Flathead, though, is gonna be all you. thing this be quiet life or blaze of glory hmm later now And that's the gist. You have two different objectives for this mission. One, we need to get a um, experimental weapon from the Maelstrom. And two, we need to get the whereabouts of how to get into Arasaka to get the chip from somebody else. We'll worry about that starting part five. Part four, however, I'm going to have to power up because I'm too weak to take on those missions. This is RPMan985. See you guys next time as we deal with a couple of crimes in part four. Peace out, ladies and gents.